So hey welcome back everyone in this three part video series we will be building this link shortener project. It is completely beginner friendly if you have followed my getting started video on Svelte kit you are ready to go. So let's start with a quick demo of what we will be building. You have your main shortener here and this section shows you the top 10 most clicked links. Let's try the link it has generated for us. Now you should see the clicks count has been incremented for this link. And we'll also implement a complete user authentication system for this project. I will quickly demo it too. Let's register a user. It's going to send a verification email. But if I try to log in anyway, it's not going to let me. We'll also set up the mail server in this video. So let's verify the email and try again. I forgot to mention this user drop down and almost forgot to show you the forgot password form. This first part will cover the installation, setup and configuration of everything we'll need for the project. The next one will cover the complete user authentication and the last one will cover our main link shortener implementation. So let's start our project. Now let's first set up our backend with pocket base. Download the pocket base binary according to your device. I'm using curl to download this inside the backend folder. After that, extract the main executable. And start the server with pocket base server. On your very first time, it will require you to set up an admin user. Be sure to remember these credentials. This is our main database known as collections in pocket base. It will already come with a user's collection set up and ready to go. You can see all of its fields from here and add more and configure to your requirements. We'll need another collection for our links. It will have the original URL the user provided. It is required or non empty. Next field is the unique short slug that we will generate for the link. Depending on how short you want the link to be, set the min and max length. It's like the ID for the link. So make it non empty and unique. Next up, set the selection to the user who created this link. also non empty and the last one is the number of clicks a particular link has all these are set let's specify the access rules for our collection leave the first two empty so that everyone can list and view any link create action should require a valid user session Update and delete actions should only be performed by the user who created the link. The last thing we need to set up is our mail server. Go to settings, mail settings and enable use SMTP mail server. We'll use this awesome tool called Mailhawk to test our emails. It's really easy to set up. Now go to the latest release and download the binary for your device. Make it executable and run. It will provide you the SMTV address it is listening on. Use that as the host and port. Save changes and we are done. You can try sending a test email from here to make sure everything is working.
Its web page is running on port 8025. Yes, it's working all right. Now let's set up our web app in SwellKit. Select skeleton project. We don't need type checking, linting, etc. Install the dependencies. And we just need the pocket base SDK and Nanoid to generate those unique short slugs. Start the web server. We'll use Pico CSS to take care of the styling for us. All that's left is to configure pocket base for our app. Now create an environment variable for the pocket base server URL. And create a lib that will just export a pocket base instance. Last thing we need is the hooks.server.js. It is basically the first thing that runs every time your server receives a request. In this handle function, you'll have access to the event that will contain the request and resolve function that will process the event and generate a response. First, we'll load the session cookie from the request. And if the session is valid or not expired, refresh the session. If any error occurs, we'll just delete the session. You can include the pocket base instance and the user in the locals before resolving the event. It is optional but convenient. Resolve will send the event to its intended server function and return its response. And set the new session cookie to the response headers. Disable the HTTP only flag if you want the client to access this cookie. And finally return the response. Everything is now configured and ready to go. In the next video, we will implement the complete user authentication. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out.